Guys, this is a brand new 1 9th scale 4S monster truck. And currently in the UK, it's only £379. And that, my friends, is not much more than the Armour 3S range. And it's quite a bit cheaper than the Armour 4S range. And being 1 9th scale, it's probably a bit bigger than the Armour 4S. So this is from a presume it's pronounced WOV Racing. This one's branded as the Tornado, but the UK model will be branded as the Mustang. It's gonna come in four different body styles, different colors. This one's just a sample. There's a link in the description to more information. They do a brushed version as well, but I don't think the brushed version is gonna be for sale. It's just this 50 plus mile an hour brushless one. And I'm hoping that it's that color inside the box because it's gray and green. And I like gray and green. Oh, very nice. Nice little lanyard there. Set of instructions. Still can't see what colour it is. Hang on, ready? Yes, whoa, that is green. Now, I don't know what colours they're going to be selling, but <laughs> this is definitely a really nice colour. I don't think they're selling it in this colour scheme, though, which is a shame. Oh, that, sus that suspension feels pretty good. Oh, look, a nice bag as well to carry it in. Tracks just made this. They charge you probably $100 for it. <laughs> That's a very square transmitter. It looks pretty nice. It feels quite comfortable. Steering trim, throttle trim, steering dual rate, GR, gyro maybe. Little soft push buttons there as well. Uh, throttle limiting 50, 75 and 100. And then steering and throttle reverse. It's not bad actually. I mean it looks a bit square but it does feel quite nice in the hand. I don't really talk much about wheels but it feels a nice plush wheel. Now I haven't got much information on this other than what I can see with my own eyes and I've done a little bit of digging online. Look at the size of that wheelie bar. From what I can see it's got a centre diff. Apparently the diffs are 30% bigger than your normal 1.8 scale trucks. That's big. It sounds chunky in there. So like I said, I don't think they sell it in this colour in the UK. And it's going to be branded the Mustang rather than a Tornado. But it does look really nice. That is a nice soft compound on there. Inserts in the tyres. Quite nice looking wheels. Like I've shown you, a massive wheelie bar on the back. It's got this body securing system. I think you just push the top. Like that. And then, oh, I'm going to probably need two hands for it. Oh no, hang on. A bit big and chunky, but it might hold up quite well. Nothing to really write home about in there. Whoa, look at this under here. Now that is just a blank, I think. Yeah, it doesn't come with a battery. This looks very substantial, I think a good word is. And that suspension, wow, that feels really good. Let's hope this can take a bit of a kick in. I reckon this might be up for a bit of skate park sending. Uh oh. Nope. Oh, they've even gone to the trouble of a green EC5 connector. So we have got a 2200 kV brushless motor, heatsink, fan, 120 amp 4S ready ESC. I like that little bit of support there. I guess that's to stop the motor moving backwards maybe. I don't know. And then it looks like here, a quick access motor cover maybe. Oh, they're tight. Yeah, they're tight, they need heating up. Now that looks like the motor adjustment across there. And there's no hardware on the top here. So I'm presuming the access to that is to undo them. Right, we're not gonna take that apart. We're just gonna trust that it's all good in there. You got this nice chassis brace across here, Velcro battery straps, a centre shaft going through there. So I presume the other diff is in there. If it's got three diffs, which it has, what they would call the centre diff isn't in the centre. It's sitting up there. Steering servo is under there. Big bore oil shocks. I think they're plastic bodied shocks actually, where usually on something this sort of size, you get big alloy shocks. But I suppose if they work, they work. Big plastic telescopic drive shafts there. Same on the rear. Double wishbone suspension. You've got these, I don't know what that is. I guess that's some kind of pivot ball thing. I don't know. No adjustability by the looks of it up front and the same on the rear. Now, so a few comments of people talking about these big sort of bashes and stuff and why they come with like metal adjustable turnbuckles. As long as this is set up fine out of the factory, you don't really need to change it. And good quality, strong plastics are probably going to last more than turnbuckles. So I agree with that statement. Big bashers don't need adjustability if they're well set up out of the factory. So big shocks at the back as well, huge wheelie bar. And then underneath, all hex hardware there. Looks like big chunky bottom arms, big old bumper up the front there. And then same at the rear. Diffs feel nice and smooth. This <laughs> looks 
and feels really nice. I suppose we better go and see how fast it is. It says 50 plus on the box. Go and see how fast it is and then we definitely got to take it and well, give it a good seeing to. Just spotted the motor was, it looked very big. Quite small for the size of motor, but they don't melt or cause any issues then, well, they'll be fine. Thought we better test it before we take it out, make sure it works. I've put my lanyard on. Look, it's a little quick release. Anyway, I had a look for the instructions. It doesn't say anything about that GR, so we'll have to test it. Well, we got fans. Steering. Feels relatively torquey. Right, throttle. Oh my word. Well, apart from being really loud, but it has got metal gears, definitely gonna be able to do some, well, hopefully controllable stuff in the air. Oh, I took a wheel off as well. It looks like a 14 mil hex in there. It's got like some splined adapter that goes on. Uh, 14 mil hex, eight mil lock nut on there. Didn't come with like a wheel wrench. Don't know whether the retail ones will, but most of the eight scale stuff have these and they come with an eight mil. Uh, on the end. Talking of eighth scale, so this says it's one ninth scale. This is an armor big rock, which is meant to be one tenth scale. And as you can see, pretty much the same size. Now this has got the longer wheelbase on it, so the granite and stuff will be smaller. FTX Ram Raider, which is probably a sort of typical tenth scale. You can see it's a little bit longer, and just a little bit wider probably as well. I mean, it's got quite big wheels on it, so. I suppose you could call it a ninth scale or a large tenth scale. Right, I think 50 mile an hour, oh, 12 satellites to zero, come on. This one's getting a bit unreliable in them satellites, so I've ordered a new one, so hopefully we won't have to wait 10 hours for satellites. Anyway, 50 mile an hour, I think is what it's saying on the box. 50 plus, in fact. <laughs> oh, it's got some power. I think this road's just about long enough. When I do speed runs midweek, I have to use this bit because all the other roads are busy. I am standing behind this kerb for this one. Come on in. Full throttle, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Ballooning tires. That is the problem with ballooning tires. Full throttle. <laughs> brake, brake, brake. Oh, I didn't hold it for long enough then. I want to, I need to hold it full for longer. <laughs> oh, this thing's going to be a menace at the skate park. <laughs> full throttle. There we go. That'll do. <laughs> it's got so much power. Obviously 4S. Just sits on that wheelie bar. Whoa. Come on. 50, bang on, bang on 50 mile an hour. It's cold today as well. It's about nine degrees centigrade, so single figures. So that would do 50 plus on a nice hot day, I am sure. Right, let's go give it a bash. So I wanted to get this on a dirt track and I've just driven an hour to the dirt track I usually go on and they were cutting trees down. So I couldn't go there. So I've come all the way back to my other usual spot i've not been here for a while look at the state of it so i think we're on plan c now which is the skate park which was going to be in this video anyway i just wanted to give it a bit of a rip around on some like dirt or grass first world problems i know although i'm sure it absolutely rips on grass <laughs> you can certainly see this one be safe, be seen. Oh. <laughs> right, anyway, what were we doing? Skate park. To be honest with you anyway, over there, my track record is not great. I think I've broken more A-arms over there than I have here. Team Cray Skeeter, MTA, XRT. They're the main ones, I can't remember the others. Right, let's ease this in gently, shall we? It's got nice control in the air. Nice direct steering. Definitely has a bit of the uh, Armour 3S feel about it. Little cheeky backflip. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Not much effort to do that. A lot of noise, but <laughs> not much effort. Oh, that's a weird one. Done like a bunny hop and flipped over. Oh, come on. It was really nice earlier. That seems to be a, a standard for me. Blue sky when I come out. Well, it was blue sky when I went down to the dirt track that I couldn't use. Running this 4S. I mean, it's a 4S truck, so if you run it 3S, it'd just be a bit slower. Oh, this backflip's nice. Oh, that was a chassis slap. Make me cringe when that happens. <laughs> Just imagine the shock going through everything. Oh, saved. It's certainly a good test for them when you land them flat like that, but it's not great for them. This thing has got so much power. It just hooks up. Diffs feel nice and tuned actually as well. It doesn't like diff out at the front. <laughs> yeah. I always like to try this rail slide. I think I've got it like once. Oh, nearly. Way off. Oh, we'll take that, even though we didn't land it properly. Oh. Oh, I knew it. I knew as soon as it landed. Oh well, <laughs> we'll keep going. I'm pretty sure I can't get a spare one at the moment because this isn't out in the UK. <laughs> I tell you what, if you've only got a few more landings, let's go for the big jump. This, uh, <laughs> this could go horribly wrong. If you hit that railing, this is what happens. Uh, and if you hit that railing, it's not great either. <laughs> Right, here we go. This may be the last jump. Let's make it count. Whoa. Oh, it survived. Luckily, it hit that corner and not that one. Didn't think I was going to make it that time. It looked sketchy on the run-up. Uh-oh. Are we still good? <laughs> no way. That's still holding on. That is still holding on. Okay, let's do some more. Oh. <laughs> right, what I want to do, and this is definitely the last jump, I think. I'm going to hit this from right up there. I'm going to hit this and see how far we can get it. I think I had WL toys to just just before that ramp there so we can hit that ramp that'd be a record this is definitely not going to end well nope Oof. no um it survived that okay I hit the ramp crooked so there we go. Oh. <laughs> How is it surviving? How is that arm not falling off yet? The way that's broke as well, it's not like sheared or sort of snapped off like brittle plastic. It's just, I don't know where, whether I hit on that corner. Just sort of twisted and pulled it off, but I can't believe it's surviving. I feel like I should just stop running it now just to not break it on purpose.
This thing just keeps taking it. <laughs> No <laughs> way. Well, we are driving back to the car. Not much drives away from a skate park. Solid jumping, backflipping, crashing, and I don't have to carry it. Right, let's go back to the workshop and have a good look over and see if there's any more damage other than that uh, front arm. That was an intense session. Before we talk about like the damage and everything like that, this body, I wasn't sure at first, but look how easy it is to get off. You literally just you hold, under, hold it under there, push on the top, comes up, same at the back, and it's off. Oh, this is a bit stinky. Ugh. Suspension still feels nice. The body took a bit of a hit there, split there, bit of a knock just in there, just down there. Not bad, considering the weight of this, <laughs> how many times I landed on its roof. So no issues with the drivetrain, motor didn't move, didn't strip any gears, diffs are still feeling nice and smooth. All good at the back here, plenty of scuffage, but nothing broken. This side, no problems. And then, yeah, it's moving a bit more than it was, but it just held up. And it's kind of hard to tell, but if you look at it, to me, that looks like it's kind of torn it out of there rather than like snapped or split. It's as if it just pulled it and it's just like ripped it, which would tell me the plastic's not brittle. I've not looked at the footage yet, but I'm pretty sure that was a dodgy landing. Common break is an A-arm, but can you see over there? We've split the chassis. It's right underneath the motor. And although our mesh is okay, you can just see there's some movement there. So I reckon what's happened with all them flat landings on the concrete, with all that force going down, it's pushed that motor into the bottom there and pushed it down. There we go. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what the spare situation is going to be like in the UK because it's not been released yet. I did manage to find a bottom arm on a, I don't know, a German website or it was in dollars actually. Um, so found some bottom arms for it. Getting hold of a chassis, I don't know. I've not broken a chassis on the arm of 3S range before. However, I have seen a few people snap them. I think it held up well, and I would certainly put this alongside the 3S. I've not had a 4S, but I'd certainly say it's up to the arm of 3S standards. I like the look of it. I like how it drives. It's got plenty of control in the air. It back flips at the flick of the trigger. As long as spares aren't gonna cause any issues, I'd say for the money, it's certainly a solid truck. Spin it up, I was up, like...